What's up guys, Shorten here and today we're doing After Effects, which is honestly one of my favorites and most useful programs that I use. Now, has any of you ever noticed all these, I don't know, video overlays displaying on the screen right now? <laughs> Hint, subscribe. Well, that's what I'm gonna teach you to make today. So brace yourselves for the video overlays tutorial. Okay, now I know you guys want to get straight to the point and you already saw all the video overlays, yeah? So, like the video and we can get on the tutorial right now. We're currently located in Adobe After Effects. So the first thing we want to do is make ourselves a new composition. So, go to Composition, New Composition. Let's name it Overlay for Video. Since all my videos are 1980 by 1020 or the standard Full HD format, or, well, you can see it displayed right here as the format of all of my videos. So I kind of want my video overlay to be smaller and I'm not have to cover a whole video. So let's go for 500 pixels in width and about 400 in height. That's just a blind guess, so it doesn't matter what we do here. And most of my videos are 60 frames per second, so we're gonna keep this 60 frames per second as well. The duration doesn't really matter, but I don't think I'm gonna exceed six seconds on this, so I'm just gonna keep it six and click OK. This is your composition. Wow, it does look very square. <laughs> Right click composition settings, let's go for 300 and 600. Yeah, it looks more like <laughs> that's all square. If you toggle this icon, you will see that the background isn't really there. This is just black, so you can preview bright stuff on it, but you can toggle it off because there isn't really a background there. So we're gonna make like a small box appearing and then the gray background particles and it's gonna display some form of text, kind of like this one, like when it says suggest tutorials. So we're gonna make something like this, but with different text. So you're gonna see how that's made. And at the end, even though it's not needed, I'm gonna show you how to make like a small glint effect going over the text. So I wanna start by setting a base shape of this. Make a new rectangle and just draw it here. Like, this is what I want of my shape. This is just a reference layer though, so I want to lock it so I can't click on it, I can't do anything on it, so this is just a reference so I know where to draw the actual shape. Now I want to grab a pen tool because, well, believe it or not, you can draw anything you want with the pen tool. Your image is pixelated, you just click on this and adjust this. This won't mess up the actual quality, but it's just for the display so it doesn't lag as much. Click this layer, press enter, call it Reference. I don't know if I typed that right, but it doesn't matter. Select the pen tool, as we said before, and I want to zoom in. If you hold down space, you can drag the image around, and when you stop holding space, your tool is back. So I want to use this to navigate. This is just a tip for you guys. And I want to make a first point in here. Move down, click to make the second point, and to move into the edge and make the third point. This is now the first half of my shape. I want to click it up to 100 so it's in the center. If you saw the image overlay, I'm gonna play it again. As you see, the lines come from the sides and build the square. This is what I'm doing right now. So we need two set of lines, like one from this side, one from that side, and uh, that's the first shape. If I click on it again, I want to draw the second one, but I don't know how this one, line one. Now click off the layer so we make a new shape layer because if I have this selected, I can't click here because I'm gonna modify this line. So I wanna make a new shape layer and then copy it down just because it's easier. There probably is an easier way, but I'm just comfortable with using this. You can do whatever you want if you're familiar with After Effects. Make a new point. As you see, the new shape layer is created. Uh, go up, make a new point in the corner. Third one, that's it. Call this one line two. Um, if I go back to the center, fit. We can make the reference invisible and as you see, we get the same square, except the edges are a bit trimmed here. We might wanna fix that. I can simply delete my reference layer now and let's Let's first do something about these caps here, like who wants to have a cap like this? I I'm sure no one does. Open up the line, open up the components, shape one, and open up the stroke. Sorry, I had it open before because I was checking something. And go to the line cap, and instead of butt cap, select projecting cap. So now you should have a cap at the end of your point. So this makes like a perfect rectangle. Now we want to animate those. Okay, let's go to contents shape stroke and select the projecting cap in here as well and this one uh, I want to name this line one and I want to name this shape line two I want to copy this shape and paste it in here now I have both of the lines in one layer I can delete this layer and it's basically just like you see line one like two, line two both on one shape layer and I'm gonna name this shape layer lines to organize stuff now if you want to animate the lines select the contents and click on this icon and select trim paths. This will add an animation or an option to animate the trimmable paths. So as you see, if I drag this down, you can take out the ends or the starts of your trimmed paths and I'm gonna use this to animate. So you can also set it to trim simultaneous, simultaneous, 
simultaneously or individually. So if I do this, as you see, first one of them trims, then the other one trims, but I want to go for simultaneously because it just looks nice. Let's start with the end being on zero. Click the stopwatch icon to add a keyframe. So about one second, I just imagined the animation, so about a little less than one second, so I want to make the second keyframe somewhere around here. I'm just guessing here, and uh, that's it. So if I play this now, yeah, sure, it does play, but I want to transition, like I want to ease out. So the lines start fast and then stop slowly. So I want to right click on the second keyframe, go to keyframe velocity. So the incoming velocity here is 125% per second. So the velocity at which it hits the final point is 125 per second. I want to have this zero. So, oops, right click again, I'm not finished yet. By the time the animation hits the keyframe, it should be completely stopped. That means it's going to slow down, hence creating the ease out effect. The influence of this speed change is going to be, let's say, 40%. I play this now. It does slow down, but I want a stronger effect. So let's go for 65%. Yeah, 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 look at this. This is what I wanted. Let's go for 72, maybe? Let's see where we can go. Yeah, this looks pretty nice. Like, a bit exaggerated. It's, I like it. So that's the first thing. Next, we need that gray line that slides in. So we're going to do that. And I'm going to do that by simply making a new solid layer, a very dark gray color. I'll make it invisible for now, and I want to select the rectangle tool, but because I have the layer selected, it's not going to draw a separate shape, but it's going to create a separate mask. I want to draw a rectangle in here. If I make the layer visible now, the rectangle is only visible within that little real yellow rectangle we made, which is the mask. Now I want to put the layer below this so it doesn't cover the lines and call it grayness, I don't know. And if I want to drop the opacity down just because it it's supposed to be transparent, like look at this one, it's transparent. So let's go for transparency of 75, let's say. I want to make this swipe in, so let's go for an effect called linear wipe transitions. I think that's the one. Let's go for this one. And yeah, it's the, it's the right one. So now if I mess with the transition completion, you can see I can animate the transition of this, like the wipe. And I want to increase the feather so it like wipes smoothly. As you see, the animation plays. I want the wipe to start on this point. So let's go for transition completion 100. So if I press U to see the animatable keyframes. Wow, I, I really... Why is this already animated? Let's delete these keyframes. So this is the transition com com completion, completion. I can't talk. Okay, let's go forward in the timeline. And I want the transition to be finished here. So let's do this. So this is what happened. Yeah, not too... Not too good in my opinion like I want to I want to give this an ease out as well so let's do the same here 0 and 50% incoming velocity yeah this looks pretty nice except maybe I want to overlay this a little bit more yeah this is nice now I want the text select the type tool you should already have these windows open and let's type something here what's up I would usually keep this white or at least almost white, but because I'm gonna add the glint effect at the end, I wanna make this a bit gray so you can actually see the glint effect. Okay, let's actually select the text and then change it to gray because it doesn't work for some reason. Decrease the size of the text a bit, maybe. I'm pretty happy with it. I'm not gonna mess with the fonts and the variations too much because I just want the effect and I wanna position it right here, like in the center. I want to animate this to fly in. So I want the text to start flying in at this point. So I wanna hit P to show the position and just, just make a keyframe here. I'm gonna move it later. I want the text to stop flying in at this point. So I'll make another keyframe here. And I want to go to the first keyframe. By the way, if, if you want to snap to keyframes, you can hold down shift so it snaps to the keyframes. So you don't end up searching for them, but you can just snap to them instantly and move it out. So now it's just going to fly in. So I made one keyframe here, one keyframe here, flies in. Also, one thing that's very uh, interesting to watch is if you turn on motion blur, which is this icon here. If you don't see this, click the toggle switches mode so you can toggle between these. Now enable motion blur on the image. You're gonna see motion blur of the items on. So as you see, the motion blur is right here. See, this is blurred. If I turn this off, it's straight. Turn it on, it's blurred. So it looks more realistic if you turn on motion blur. Uh, but I want to keep it off just because the performance is better. It kind of flies over the blue lines. I don't want that. I just want the text to be visible inside the square. So I want to select my text layer and make a mask. It's going to be right here in this square. So it's only going to be visible in the square. This should work, right? Well, no it doesn't because it, the layer moves the mask as well. So I want to go to mask, make a keyframe of the mask path right here and go to the previous keyframe 
And uh, where's the mask path now? Simply move the entire mask to be on the same place. What I did here is make two keyframes for the mask. The first one is here, the second one is on the same place. So this should only be visible inside the square. So that's it, they're both synced. I'm noticing something like I might want to put the mask a bit more left so it doesn't cover the blue lines. So when it becomes visible, it literally just goes behind the blue lines and into the composition. One more thing we do need to do is the particles. So I want to make a new layer, solid, call it particles and just make it black, that doesn't matter. And search for effect called particle world, apply. But this is the particles. Now, where to position this, like if I turn the other layers back visible, I just want the particles to be appearing on the gray screen, not on the edges here. So I want to use a mat. First, I want to duplicate the grayness by pressing Ctrl plus D, so now I have two graynesses. Put particles in between of both of them and uh, click this toggle switches so you get this. And the track mat is going to be alpha mat grayness. So this upper grayness instantly turns invisible and particles are now only visible where the grayness is. If I come back here, like as you see the wipe is now nearly transparent, the particles are only visible on this part right here where it's visible because it's alpha matting the grayness and that's why alpha mats are very important. I talked about this in the previous video, you can click the eye corner to get a general After Effects tutorial. What I'm doing right here is more specific but you get the point, it's pretty interesting and it's useful. Now all we need is that glint effect on the text. I want to select all of my components right click it and press pre-compose. So this is gonna be the background, I guess. The text should stay out of this because the text has the glint and I don't wanna loop it. You'll see what I mean in a second. So this should be about this long if I double click on the background thing. And I wanna make all of the components last till this point. You'll see what I'm doing in a second. If I zoom in on the timeline, yes, they're all here. So this overly thing, like this background, if I go one frame forward, yeah, it disappears. So this is the final frame. I want to make the entire composition the same length. So the background here, I want to duplicate it, right click on it, and go to time and time reverse layer. That's going to make the layer go backwards. Now if I drag this out to just the end of this, it's now going to play backwards. So if I do this, if I play this now, stay it on for a while, and then disappears backwards. This is the end of my overlay, so I want to drag the final composition down here as well. So only this part will get rendered. That's it. So this is the background. Now I want to animate the text. Flies in at this point, and then it's just gonna fade. Like, I'm not gonna go over too much. It's just gonna fade down. Yeah, so this. Maybe bring it closer, so... Yeah, so that's it. This is, this is my animation now. One's up, and then... So that's it, that's what I've made. Now I want to add the glint effect once the animation is complete. So click on the was up, press Ctrl plus D so it duplicate it. And now while it's here, I want to make this invisible for now. And I want the glint to appear at this point. First thing we got to do is build the glint. So go to layer, new, solid. We're going to make it white. We're going to call it glint. This is now your white glint layer. So I want to make a mask, which is going to be about this big. Go under mask and increase the feather, resize the mask down a bit and decrease the feather so it's more pronounced. Okay, I want to duplicate it so I can define it better. More sharp and stuff. So this is now my glint. I want to select both of them, go to pre-compose and this is going to be my glint. I know it's hard to follow but you get used to it when working After Effects. Now I want to animate the glint going up and down. So first things first, I want to change the rotation because the glint is going to be tilted. This is my glint and the position is going to be here because it hasn't started yet. So this is where the glint is, make a position keyframe, move forward in the timeline and move it forward. So what's going to happen is this, it's going to appear here and then the glint is going to move over the text and then it's going to disappear. So this is it. Now I just want the glint to be only visible on the text. Where have I done this before? Track mats. Literally the same thing I did with the particles, I'm now going to do with the glint. So I do have two of the text layers, so I can make the second one visible. Put the glint in between of them and select a track mat which is above layer was up. So now you can see the glint riding over the what's up. Okay, I might want to make this layer a bit more visible. Click window, click character so I can have this character thing. Select your type tool, select the what's up and uh, let's just go for a darker color just so the glint is more visible. That's the only reason I'm doing this. So now we should have this. Size in, what's up, glint flies over and then disappears and everything goes backwards. So that's it. 
Now we just need to render and add sound effects. Go to composition, add to render queue. If I press the render button, it's gonna render now, but the problem is I want to keep the transparency. So we gotta tell the project that I want to keep the transparency, or else it's just gonna make the black background, which we don't want. Go to lossless, and now select a QuickTime format, because QuickTime compresses the file, but it keeps the transparency. So let's go for this. RGB plus alpha. RGB are the colors. Alpha is the transparency. By keeping both of these on, I can basically put this above my layer and it's gonna be visible. So let's go OK. Now define where I wanna save it. I just wanna go for desktop overlay, even though I had it called the same way before. Render. Now it's rendering my video and this is the WhatsApp and it's even got the motion blur which I assigned it before. And now I wanna open Adobe, Adobe Premiere Pro. One second. Here we are in Premiere Pro, so I just go to File, Import, and now I want to import both this overlay plus some footage, and I'm gonna import this footage from the tutorial, which is still being recorded, by the way. I split the tutorial into several clips. So I wanna drag this bottom layer in here. Let's listen. So I kinda want my video overlay to be smaller. Basically, if I drag this overlay across the screen, let me just mute the bottom video, because I don't wanna hear it right now. If I play this, the overlay is working, it's riding across the screen. And if I think it's too small, I can just click it and uh, scale it up. So this was a video overlay tutorial, and these ones are made the exactly the same way, except I used shapes and other effects. Basically, you can build your own video overlay, and honestly, I think this is a lot of fun. This process is a lot of fun, and I'm enjoying this. Please suggest more After Effects tutorials. I'm having a lot of fun with this. Thank you for watching. I hope I taught you a thing about After Effects. Like the video for more, and suggest your tutorials in the comments, as the video overlay told you to. Now, thank you for watching, and stay sharp.